The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to a town called Nine, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people. When he was near the gate of the town, it happened that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable number of the townspeople were with her. When the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her. Do not cry, he said. Then he went up and put his hand on the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I tell you to get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Everyone was filled with awe and praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. And this opinion of him spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Already suffers what he fears. I'm sure, my dear brothers and sisters, what the proverb said is exactly true in our lives. There is a kind of virus that takes place in our lives, not just the coronavirus, but there's a virus called fear. I'm sure we all have succumbed to it. And especially even when we experience death in our family life. And that is why today's Holy Mass is a mass for the dead, that we are praying for the dead. As what has been said in the book of Maccabees that was proclaimed to you, we are praying for the dead. We are helping them, we are assisting them, because they themselves cannot pray anymore. We need to help them, to assist them, so that they may reach to the place that God has destined for them. So it is good, my dear sisters and brothers, that as Catholics, that we should never forget to pray for the dead, to offer Mass for the dead, to pray the Rosary for the dead, so that we will help them to the destined place that God has prepared for them. But for us who are living, as much as we are praying for the dead, for us, that you and me, we all go through a kind of suffering in our lives, especially when we have lost our loved ones. We find it difficult to embrace suffering. And we do not want to go there. Because we know what happens when we suffer. Today, as we celebrate this Holy Mass, it's also good for us to ponder, to reflect what this whole suffering is all about. 
our society sees suffering as defeat and we never want to be defeated the best way to handle suffering is to deny it exists is to deny it exists because it can be too painful too difficult to embrace too difficult to hold on especially when someone whom we love pass on there are some people who see suffering as the way that god punishes us that was a kind of an earlier concept that was driven into our minds but that is not true we know it is not true that god does not punish us because we have done something bad god admonishes us yes god purifies us yes but god does not punish anyone jesus who is the messiah come down from heaven teaches us something vastly different have you ever heard of a change agent change agent a change agent is a person from inside or outside an organization who helps an organization or part of an organization to transform how it operates jesus was the greatest change agent that ever existed and he tells us that suffering is a tool of transformation when we suffer we learn about ourselves and the new insights on the world these insightful truths can lead us into new vistas of work and life my dear friends we know that suffering was the change agent that led to our redemption through the death of jesus the romans and the jewish establishment saw the cross as the greatest of all defeats but jesus knew that it was the road to victory the actions of jesus and his acceptance of the cross generate a new meaning of to suffering it means that now suffering is a way of cleansing and renewal in past days and in the view of the world suffering can have no benefit you know sometimes when you have a casual conversation with your friend or with someone whom you know in that conversation you may talk about suffering and you may hear someone saying to you that suffering has no benefit but the truth is my dear friends suffering brings redemption that gives us a way of life that is hard to see or imagine when we experience the redemption of suffering our lives are turned around 
and made new. And that is why it is important to look back at our lives and see what am I suffering from? We all have some kinds of suffering. We all are enduring sufferings, even at this moment. But let us face the reality that suffering is a part of life. That suffering in the Christian context brings redemption. And this is what we need to see. A new way of seeing. A new way of experiencing. I'm sure the gospel text that we have this morning, the widow, she thought that the death of a son is the end of everything. She is already a widow. And now she loses her only son. And who were accompanying her? Not her immediate family members. You don't hear that. The one who accompanying her were the townspeople, the disciples, a great number of people journeying towards the burial ground. She was all alone. And yet it was the people and the disciples uh, who came to be with her in a time of suffering. In other words, my dear friends, when we go through our own suffering, it's not just that we need to endure all alone. You may never know that your neighbor next door also going through the same suffering. The context can be different. You may never know that a friend of yours, a friend of mine, could also go into some form of suffering. And it is here, my dear friends, that we are called to accompany one another in the face of suffering. And this is important. Sharing. Sharing the burden. Sharing the pain. Sharing the suffering of each other as we continue in this great struggle that we all are going through during this time. We are called to be with one another, to share with one another, to help one another, to console one another. C.S. Lewis, in his book called A Grief Observed, Put it this way. We were promised sufferings. We were promised sufferings. They were part of the program. We were even told, Blessed are they that mourn. Remember the Beatitudes? Blessed are they that mourn. And we have to accept it. It's part of the program of our life. C.S. Lewis said, we must accept it. Yes, my dear friends, these sufferings can be used to drag us down, can drag us down, or to bring us to a new path that leads to a higher plane. It's up to us to decide how we handle suffering because that is the way we redeem ourselves in this life. In the Sanskrit, 
in the sanskrit it is written you will never have sufferings all the time neither you will have joy all the time it's a mixture of both but the question or what we are called to do is that when we face sufferings whether they call it a death or whether you call it when you have lost your job or whether we call it a kind of pain that you are entering or going through our suffering gives us the permission to move on to move on we go through emotions that changes and allow us to forge a new and necessary path in suffering we are searching as we suffer we are drawn inward and cleanse ourselves of the things that weigh us down the book of proverbs tells us iron sharpens iron so man sharpens his friends countenance the book of proverbs says that iron sharpens iron so a man sharpens his friends countenance suffering is the iron that sharpens us for our journey the pilgrimage of suffering is the journey to the next level as we go to that level we receive the ability to move on to the things that god has for us the saddest thing in life is to be frozen in time frozen in time one who has the inability to use the ups and downs of life as the pathway to the future can really be miserable yes if you're going to keep on looking at suffering and unable to move forward to move the path that god is showing you is going to make your life miserable and that is why we need to find meaning in our sufferings my hope for you my dear friends is that you understand and acknowledge the inevitable inevitability of suffering as part of your journey this acknowledgement will help you to cope and grow in your valley times of life in your valley times of life yes my dear friends like what happened to the widow of nine that when jesus touched the bier or the coffin when jesus saw the widow he felt sorry for her and he told her do not grieve do not cry and then he touches upon the coffin or the bier and then he immediately tells the man who was in the coffin young man i tell you to get up i tell you to get up a very important words that you and i need to ponder this morning we need to get up and not just wallowing up in our own pain in our own suffering as though that suffering has really as drag us down that we have lost meaning in life that we do not want to engage in life anymore because of suffering or because someone whom i love has gone today whatever pain whatever suffering 
whatever that we are all are going through during this time of pandemic, we need to hear what Jesus told to the man who was, who was inside the coffin. And he said, young man, I tell you to get up. I tell you to get up. Get up from your pain. Get up from your suffering. Get up. Move forward. If we can only listen to what God is saying to us, even in our moments of grief, in our pain, we can move forward. Whatever that you are grieving, whatever that you are in pain, let the word of God speak to you this morning. That Jesus tells you personally, James, I tell you to get up. Adeline, I tell you to get up. Christine, I tell you to get up. Chris, I tell you to get up. William, I tell you to get up. Don't remain in your suffering as though the whole spiritual life has collapsed. And getting up means that you are moving forward. So let us get up in the face of death. In the face of suffering, in the face of pain, in the face of meaninglessness, hopelessness, let us get up. Whatever the situation that we may be in, let us pray and let us ask God to give us the grace and the strength that we all need during this time of pandemic. So let us pray in this holy mass, especially as we pray for all our diseased family members whom we have offered this morning, we pray that they may rest in peace. We pray that they will glorify God on the throne of heaven, that we also pray for ourselves, the living, that we will too have the strength and the courage to move on in our spiritual journey. So let us pray for this. Let me end with this prayer. Lord, guide us by your Spirit to be able to use the setbacks and defeats of our lives as a way to move forward. Allow us to offer our sufferings to you so that they may become stepping stones to a stronger, greater faith. Please give us awareness of your presence and the comfort that comes with it when we suffer. We ask that you allow us to see suffering through the eyes that you did when you went to the cross. Amen.